Evening people, how are we? Uh, nine bells, the usual story, and I have a really good one tonight. And well, they've all been really good, but tonight I'm really looking forward to speaking to a friend of mine, Enda Stevens. And Enda is a player that everybody loves, Irish international. Uh, obviously, started here in the League of Ireland. I was lucky enough to play with him for a year as well. And he's an unbelievable lad, and here he is now, and we'll get it going. Davey, how are you doing, pal? Just waiting on Enda to tune in now. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And I hope he has good Wi Fi. <laughs> I should be all right. <laughs> there he is. Look look at you with the Premier League earphones and everything. Look at you. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> hey, I'm actually a bit nervous about this. <laughs> Will you Most stop? nervous I've been. Are you yeah. really nervous? Ah, just a little bit, yeah. I'll go easy on you. Don't worry, pal. How are you? I'm not too bad, you. I'm good, I'm good, yeah. You've been lurking in the long grass just watching a few of the videos, so... Yeah, I, I they're well, enjoyable, though. You can really enjoy them. You're happy with them, are you? Yeah, yeah. They're going okay, pal, yeah. Well, it's obviously with what's going on, the more than yourself, um, strange times, and everybody is kind of feeling now at this, at this stage. So we put them together um, last week, and then obviously I was hounding you for a few days as well. There's Detzer as well, the one we wanted. Detzer, you were the one we wanted, and we got you. Uh, but Detzer was great, yeah. so obviously I've been hounding you for a few days ended to get you on, and I know sometimes you can be a shy lad, but I'm delighted to have you on anyway. How do I, uh, how do I turn off all these comments? <laughs> you just have to put up them. I don't know how nah, you... Nah, really? It'll all be good for you, don't worry, yeah. Don't be looking at the comments, just look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got someone telling me to say fuck Wednesday. <laughs> don't mind them, yeah, you don't have to worry about them. Um, so how's lockdown treat you in it? That's all right. Like we've been sent home, and given programs to do, and that. So we've been keeping as fit as we possibly can be. What part of Sheffield are you living in? I'm living in Mossborough now, but I'm okay, moving so soon. Up, yeah, no, I was just when I was over there, I was up past Eccleshall Road and up Ch where Chance is and all. You know, with well, the old Chance, you wouldn't remember that was a long time ago. But the the, the fancy part I was in. Oh well, yeah, living a <laughs> living the high life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll get on to Sheffield in a little bit, Enda But we're going to go back through, obviously, a few of the clubs A few of the players you play with um, You know the story, you've watched enough of the menu at this stage And we're going to have a bit of crack, if that's okay Yeah, yeah uh, So we go right back, I suppose we first I first met you, uh, when I first came across you, was at St. Pat's mm. And you thought to yourself, who's this fellow we just signed? <laughs> uh. But no, the first I the first I came across you because the time I signed for Pats, obviously you were only I was only working it out there. That was what ten years ago. So we had nineteen, twenty. Yeah, nineteen. I think was it eighteen, nineteen. You were very young anyway because I remember what stood out. I didn't know you at the time because uh, you were only a kid, obviously. And um, we we had a training session, the first training session, and I was looking around at some of the other midfielders that would have been kind of maybe in my position. But you played a midfield the first day we trained. And he stood out like a sore thumb. And I said to myself, I'm not worried about the other fellas that are playing. I says, who's this kid with the left foot? Um, I don't remember playing midfield. But Well, it was like a little game we were playing, but you were playing central and you stood out anyway. Um, yeah. And I remember saying to myself, who's this, who's this young fella? So I was asking around afterwards. and But then, of course, we turned into a left full today. Then, um, so you played the season at left full. But that was the first I came across you uh, at Pats. But did you enjoy your year at Pats that time? Yeah, it was it was a tough year for us, wasn't it? Yeah, it like was. in the league terms. But then we had the joy of the Europe. So oh, it was, a, was brilliant. It was a massive experience for me. Like I was in the fast course, you know, um, and I literally jumped from the fast course straight into full time football, basically. Okay. Um, I signed there, never even expecting to play because Pat had a really good season the year before, didn't they? Yeah, well, that was the problem I think at the time as well. In fairness to Jeff Kennedy, they had heard a lot of the lads. And there was a big divide with lads who had been there at the previous regime, wages-wise, and then he yeah. was trying to build a newer team. Um, <laughs> Bordy's on already, look. <laughs> What's he saying? You were still smoking at 19. <laughs> 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 but, uh, well, you were smoking cigars, because the other thing, right, even though I'm after giving you a bit of praise there, the other thing that stood out for me as well was, straight away I noticed the ability, but... You were so laid back and it was unbelievable. Oh, no. we, we nearly used to have to shake you before, not even before, whatever about training, but games as well. Like, and I just couldn't get over how relaxed and easy going you were. Uh, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that I was relaxed and easy going. I think that was just the front. 
I'd still be like deep down, I'd be nervous about my first game and me and Wardy have a, a, a good laugh because uh, when I was playing with you, old Pats, we played at Turner's Cross away and that was a big occasion for me. I was nervous as hell. That was the first I, game, was it? Our first league was, game? Was, was it? I know, it could have been anyway, yeah. It was it was early on, and I remember I got the ball, and I think it might have been the first time I touched the ball. You know, you want that easy pass, a positive pass, and I look up to you, <laughs> and I made eye contact with you when I go to pass, and you shout at me, "No, don't give me it," but I gave it to you anyway. <laughs> it must be the go, only time in the world I said that. Yeah, I've given it to you. You've kicked it away, and I goes, "What do you mean you don't?" Yeah, don't give it to you. And you just looked at me and goes, "I don't want it," and I was like, "Gosh." <laughs> What were we getting wasn't me. in for? Wasn't me. Oh, uh, that was that was that was early on. That's my first memory of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good one. Uh, that, no. That's why I'm doing interviews now. Look, and you're over there for Sheffield United. Ah, no, it was funny, like. But uh, no, it was. But that was my first kind of uh, memory that you had all the ability in the world, but you were so laid back. But you did establish yourself, and I think you must have played 30, 35 games. You played all the games anyway that year. Um, and even though things didn't go as well for us, I suppose, the move to Shamrock Rovers then, they came in, Michael O'Neill, I think, was the manager at the time. So that was kind of a massive break for you then when you went to Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, but that started off terribly. Um, so I went from playing every week and I couldn't get a game. I think we played pre-season. Uh, we played a game in Bray and I was so bad in that game. Like uh, That's when he signed Danny Murphy after seeing me play that game. He says, <laughs> oh, here, he went out and signed uh, Murphy. Um, so I was uh, I, I think I was on the bench for a good three months before I got a look in and then when I got a look in I kind of nailed down my spot and kept it um, and that's when we, obviously the good times started rolling in there yeah of course because it was a great time obviously you went on yeah. to win two leagues and the European stuff but did you find Michael tough in there or how influential was he for you because as I said that's the one thing that kind of crops up and we'll get to where you are now, but there's the conversation with Chris Wilder as well when you're at Northampton and kind of everybody knew you had the ability and it's something you hear with a lot of lads, all the ability, but just the other side of things. Um, yeah. How did you find Michael? Uh, he was tough. He was stern, but he was, he, he knew what he wanted from you. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, yeah. Don't start yeah. this. Um. <laughs> I need to charge my battery. <laughs> uh, See what I mean? Laid back. You're not um, even prepared. <laughs> yeah, so when I came in with him, he had everything nailed down to a T. Like, he is pure tactical. And he knows exactly what he wants from his players. And you you play to that. Um, and that's how we kind of done so well. Like, we we wouldn't have played the most stylish type of football, but we were so effective in what we'd done. Um, and teams just couldn't yeah. handle it with us. And I think over time, with training and all that, like it was just, it was a massive learning learning curve for me. Because with Jeff, did you get the sense with Jeff? He's he's a great coach. Like yeah. the the training sessions I've done with Jeff and Pesh are probably still some of the best sessions I've done. Yeah, Pesh, man, he was some character, wasn't he? Ah, he was brilliant. <laughs> he was some coach though. Like training was so exciting every day. Yeah, well, training was brilliant. In fairness, to yeah. Me. What killed them as well, Ender, was the fact that they were flying in and out. That never. It sat never well, worked. You know. And the, the squad was, that was a mad dressing room, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was such a, as I said, it was such a mix from the previous setup. And then yeah. he was trying to have new lads. And and we got off to such a good start. I think we won the first three or four games. And, um, and we had a few bad was, injuries, didn't we? Well, I think the day he played Jamie Harris and Jason Gavin was injured. And Jamie played the first three or four games. And as soon as Jason Gavin was back fit, he put him straight back in ahead of Jamie. And it was murder straight away. And yeah. it never really recovered after that. And there was constant friction and fights. That's my memories of it anyway, you know? Yeah, it's that long ago. It's tough, isn't it? But on Michael O'Neill, and uh, you're saying there you struggled for the first three months. Would would you would he have been the type that would have in conversations, which, because you were a young player, to say, look, this is what I want from me. This is what I need. Um, or was it a case of you just had to bide your time and wait for your chance? Uh, it was more of a case of he, he done. I done most of preseason. I think Bray was like one of the last games preseason before we started, um, and I think uh, I think when he signed Morph, I think I wasn't getting a look in, um, and the team are doing well. And to be fair to them, they done they they came so close the season before, mm. so well, there was a lot of ex expectancy on him. And then maybe he was probably thinking such a young kid. He's whatever else, and then I even I even think I played against UCD, and he took me off after like 
46, 47 minutes. Yeah. Like literally came out for the second half, two minutes in, and we got dragged. Um, so I learned it that, that way. That was were I, probably asleep at half time in the restaurant. <laughs> But I kind of had that experience because I had I, I was playing like it's the consistency that managers look for, isn't it? Now looking back, the one thing you need is you need a manager's trust. You need a manager to say I oh, trust him to perform. But I was I was a bit inconsistent with that. Um, yeah, but you were young well as well. Yeah, you? that's what I mean. The only way you get that consistency is playing bad, isn't it? Through them games, like do you remember uh, Bucharest away? Oh yeah, Bucharest, but that was behind closed doors. Yeah, closed doors. Yeah, that was that. That's a new experience for me. Look. Yeah, but 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 because you're so young, dear all the things you probably learn more from the bad days than you do from the good days. But yeah. um, and they build you as a character as well, which obviously to have over the years with yourself. Because look at you now, you'd never think if someone was to watch you now with Sheffield United and say that lad was laid back and a bit easy ozy, and they probably wouldn't put the, put the two together. Because when they look at you now, like how you're how you're so proactive in the game and up and at them and attacking and. Um, and that's why I, I'm mad about Chris Wilder. I want to get to him and spend a good bit of time on him. But yeah. I suppose that's what comes from the, the chat with him, maybe in Northampton. He sensed that straight away and you was loads more in you. Yeah, the thing when I went to Northampton was they kind of seen my ability, but they, they looked at my fitness. And my fitness was like so far off. it, I couldn't last the game. Um, I was good in the ball and everything worked out in a sense of that they were happy with. But we we do a run in, in training and I'd be at the back, um, and he's like, you're a fullback, like, I need me fullbacks up the top of the run, they need to be the fittest, and then it kind of, whatever happened then, it, didn't, it was only an emergency loan, but he ended it quickly, and I was driving back up, and I was just thinking to myself, like, I need to get my act together here, because where do you but go be, after that? But before all that, right, because that's, I want to pick that up in a couple of minutes, but I want to do the Shamrock Rovers thing, and Villa, because did you, did you find, we do, Shamrock Rovers was so successful for the European stuff, which, a lot of people were asking today about Ask Enda, about his experiences. And the European thing was massive, especially for everybody involved in the League of Ireland because the first club to get into the group stages as well was massive. But the memories you have of that run, and is there any game that sticks out? Um, or was it the, the Belgrade one where you did win and qualify? Uh, Belgrade would be like up there with the highest of the highs in, in career moments. Um, but the Juventus game was a big, big thing. Like, you know, playing against them, bringing them to Tally. Uh, Mick, Mick O'Neill dropped me for the away game. Because he had bowls. Yeah, because he had bowls. I think we played tours in and we had bowls on the weekend. We came back. Um, but that was a massive experience. Uh, for me personally, I think Copenhagen at home, I think it was probably the best game I played for Shamrock Rovers that day. And that was when I kind of had that bit of confidence to say, well, maybe I can do it um, at that level. Okay. Um, and that's kind of where you try to build on, yeah. And obviously you were living with Wardy at the time, so <laughs> was he not filling you with confidence for the <laughs> matches? <laughs> and I know, I know Wardy's a character at a mess around. We all love Wardy and anyone that knows him. But did you ever kind of, did you ever have chats? Obviously he's a close friend as well. Did you ever have chats to him and say, look, Wardy, what do you think of this? Or was that never on the... Never on the cards, no. Yeah. There's, not, there's nothing serious to Wardy. But there must be a serious side at some point. No, there is, but he just he's the one that you don't really... You go to him because he'll cheer you up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. But, um, so, so obviously, the Sam McGrover thing, as I said, was brilliant. Um, so then the move comes around to Villa, and then obviously, you must have been over the moon, and everybody it was a big move at the time because you were just after coming off the back and winning the Young Player of the Year as well. Um, Alex McLeish signed as well. I suppose... The hopes you had going over and then I suppose the way things transpired. Do you look back now and is there any reasons as to why you feel things didn't happen for you or as you were saying earlier about maybe application and stuff? Uh yeah, I didn't have I didn't have if you look back at it now, I didn't have like I wasn't I didn't have the belief in myself that I was good enough. Because even, went, even coming off the back of such a successful time with Shannon Crowers. Yeah, because when you go in there there's there's a massive there's massive egos in that changing room. And you're coming from like little Shamrock Rovers, they'll say, yeah. like QID, whatever else, and you're in the big leagues now. And it was, it was, you just had, I just needed that more belief and that little kind of, like Paul Cook always said, like you need to find that edge. Yeah. And, I, and he found it for me. Yeah. Um, you know, he got that out of me, he got the best out of me. Um, and I didn't have that going at the villa. And did you realize then to go over, because you were still young at the time, did you realize the opportunity that you had, or was it? 
No. I didn't take no, I did I did realise and I know how big of a jump it was, but I don't think I I dedicated myself the way I should have done. Like if I could go back then, like I'd play it I'd do it so differently, yeah. Yeah, well it's true. And that's life in general, as people ask yeah. every player that even goes away at fifteen, sixteen, seventy. If you were to speak to a postman tomorrow or a bus driver, they'd all tell you to do things differently back when they were younger. That's just life and living. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose the big thing for you and that's enough about Philip, because as you said, things didn't pan out for whatever reason, and that was one of the reasons. It's it's wilder I'm mad about, so I want to get to that Northampton, because he went out on a few loans, but is that the one really that, as you said there, you had a chat with him, you were going home in the car, and is that the moment you thought, I need to cop on here? Yeah, I think, well, it was a, it was a, it just put the fear of God into me that I got, he ended me loan early from League, league Two, um, and I was thinking, well, he's he's not having me, so who's gonna have me then? Um, and it was just it was just a big wake up call. Uh, it, it's hard to kind of go back to that time, but it was just it was down in the dumps. You're thinking I'm gonna have to go home. Are you a failure? Have you go home? You know all the things that go through your head. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but then I ended up getting a, a long move after that to Doncaster League One, so that it kind of takes your mind off it. And things went well at Doncaster. They were okay, but it was just it 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 was literally. Um, it was never going to improve me being there. Do you know what I mean? Okay. I was never going to go to the next step. It was just, I was just kind of like, like, like jogging boy. Like, you know, it's just panning out the way it is. There's no ambition there from me to do, okay. to do well or that. Um, and and did, then, you, did you sense in that, that was Wilder having you before that? Uh, what, before the loan? No, in the game, you said how he, how he cut it short. So maybe in the first two or three weeks at long was he having well, I, sh- I showed up the training and there was another left back there. Okay. So then I, I went in to see him. And he says, oh, did he not tell you? Um, we've ended your loan. Like, and I was like, what? So then that, that was when, that's when I had to meet him. And I just said, I ha- like, I have to. No, well, to be fair, he didn't tell me. I went to go see him, have the meeting. And then that's when he kind of explained himself. Okay. Um, and then that's when we just had a, I think it was a half an hour, forty five minute chat, and was just asking for his advice and what he would do in my situation. But but that's what I'm saying. Before that, did you feel this fella likes me, or I'm getting on well with him? Were you comfortable enough then to have that chat with him, or did he take it upon himself the fact that he sees your ability, but you you just weren't getting enough out of yourself that he took it upon himself to have the chat with you? Well, I went to see him. Okay. Because I, t- I felt like I had to go see him because I needed I needed to go speak to someone. Okay. Um, and then when I went to see him, I was just—I didn't go for an argument of why he ended the loan. I just went for a, like just a chat to say, "What would you do? Where would you go next?" And he but just you must, out. but you must have felt happy enough with him to do that, and then rather than go back, go back to Villa. And did you feel as though there was no one back at Villa to maybe have that chat with? No, not at all. No. Okay. It was just got to that stage of Villa where it was just stale. I didn't okay. enjoy it. I didn't want to go in. It was just horrible. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. And was that with McLeish as well and the whole lot? I need a staff. No, McLeish, McLeish was gone then. McLeish, see, I never got to, I got six months with McLeish. Okay. Um, and then I went back and to be fair, like, I did, I, got, I had my act together. That summer, I, I didn't go away on holidays. I trained literally the whole summer with Philly McMahon. And he got me in, like, proper shape, like, tip-top shape. Pre-season, I was excellent. Um, and then it just kind of, you, you just have a disappointment and it, after that disappointment, and it just kind of it knocks you back and like I, I remember doing so well but then I remember we played Bourne Albion in, in a friendly and I set up the goal like in the friendly and I was thinking coming in at half time thinking I played well here in front of the new manager who was uh, Lambert and uh, he slaughtered me really? so yeah so like he just he, he slaughtered me and I was like whoa like, that's a setback and then still kept me fitness still trained well done everything right and then I got to the first game of the season and I wasn't even in the squad, you know. Um, I think we played Werder Bremen away in the last friendly uh, last friendly before the season started. And I started that. So I, I was under the impression, oh, I'll have a chance to start in the first league again. And then I went from that game to not even being in the squad, not even travelling. And then that was another setback. Okay. Um, and I didn't handle them setbacks well enough, you know. And that's something that people talk about now because... After going through all the, the disappointments and maybe going out in the loans and Villa situation and stuff like that were the setbacks to see where you are now. Like, even though we were saying our impression of you was that you were maybe quiet, shy, 
easy going. You're obviously mentally very tough inside without probably even realising until now. Uh, yeah, I think it's just an act, isn't it? Like laid back and I was just. It wasn't mean. an act, and you were. Laid back. <laughs> I was just within myself, like you know. We used to have to give you a kick up the arse before you went down the pitch. I don't remember being that bad. I, I, I thought now, I have to say, I thought you were so, like, asleep, almost. And a few people, like, said that, like, a few people said that, like, the, the lad that, I used to deliver pizzas for four star pizza, he says, any more laid back, you'd fall off your chair, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah, so. it wasn't just the, the football managers, it was the pizza manager as well. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza boss, yeah. <laughs> when you think back, though, like amazing uh, ten years, it just goes to show you, like where you're at now. It's, it's look, everybody loves you. I love you, and it's phenomenal. So we're all delighted in that sense. But when you go to Portsmouth, then, right? Um, and here's another one. Then maybe in the same mold as Wilder, Kooky, and he gets the best out of you. Yeah. What? And we had Richie Ryan on last week. We had Owen Doyle. I know Kooky well. <laughs> A lot of the lads that uh, played in the league that would have dealt with Cook, we all rave about him. What is it with Cook? I kind of know already from people. What did you find with him? Um, I think it's just his, his attitude towards football. Like he just loves it. You know, it's his, it's it's his eats, drinks, sleeps football, like, and he just he has that. He just I don't know. He just he makes you want to play for him and give it your all, and he just fills you with confidence. He backs you. He backs you when you play bad. He backs you when you play well. It's just he just kind of gets everyone on side. If you get me. And how did that move come about? Then just before we get chatting to him, um, because you said the Doncaster thing, you were kind of ambling along. Um, how did the Portsmouth move come about? I had two clubs that wanted me: Colchester and Portsmouth. Okay. So it was pick one or the other. Like yeah, Doncaster yeah. came in for me, but it was it was never really. It was it was never really concrete or anything like that. But um, it was literally Colchester and and Portsmouth, yeah. And, and had you had you had, had any dealings with Cookie before, or did you speak to anyone about him? Just through the League of Ireland, I had uh, I knew like Sligo and how he played, and then we played Villa. We played uh, Chesterfield in a friendly, and they absolutely battered us. Um, his team absolutely murdered us um, in the friendly. Mm. And I was chatting to him for a little bit after that, but he's he's just a joker and a killer. Like I never had a serious conversation with him. Okay. Um, until I saw him for him, and then like when I saw him for him, I just kind of you kind of grow that relationship with him, and he just kind of gets you playing playing for him, like you know. And you mentioned there um, a little follow on, I suppose, from the chat you had with Wilder that could be to, to play with the edge. And even I was reading an article today, David Snade done a brilliant article on you in the 42 and all the quotes from the different managers and, and particularly those two, Wilder and Kuki. And sometimes people think playing with an edge, as Kuki said, going out kicking fellas or anything like that. It was more just the fact that you being on the front foot and, and using your ability, I suppose, rather than being the laid back, lazy yeah. that we do a pass. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Like, it just gives you that determination to go out win games, like at all costs, do whatever you can, and like there's times with Kuki, like if um if we had a bad game, he put me in a boxing gym the next day to do training. You know what I mean? Just to get try to get me. If I pulled out of a tackle, I'll be in a boxing gym to try to get me like the aggression out of me, or yeah. be more aggressive um in the right manner. But he used to have it in a boxing gym. He used to make us do six more runs down the seafront. But he'd get that angry, like it, it just gives you that drive, and and that's what he was really good at. But did you sense then, and uh, from the disappointments you had before, did you finally feel, here's a manager who really likes me, he's filling me with belief, I'm playing every week, things are beginning to turn out for me? Yeah, that, I think that was a big thing as well. Like You, you feel wanted there. I, feel like I didn't really feel like I had, I was wanted there. I felt like when I got in, when I broke in at Villa, like it was enjoyable, it was one of the unbelievable experience and that, but I always felt if I made... One mistake, which I did, which I did a bad game or whatever else, I'm straight out of the team. And you don't go from the team from playing to the bench. You just go from the playing to you're not in the squad. And, and that you know, first year, so hard to get back in. Yeah, and that first year of Portsmouth ended, and he won. He got promoted as well. Did you, was it the first year? You... No, second year, second season. Yeah. And oh, you finished sixth the first year. Sorry, and he got promoted then the second season. Yeah. Um, so that must have been a great time because obviously people remember Portsmouth when. Harry Redknapp and the Premier League and all that stuff and there was they were known for a um, good atmosphere in the place obviously they went into the doldrums then for a while but that might have been the feel good factor coming back to the club then when Cookie went there 
yeah, he brought a lot of good lads down there. Um, he signed a lot of a lot of new lads. So, and the thing is with Portsmouth, everyone has to move down there. So you're always spending time at lads off the team and you're going out for coffees and that. So it's more like when you were back home in Ireland with uh, Rovers and that. You're more mates. Okay. Um, and it was just, it was, it's a great place to live. It's a great football club. You're getting 18 and a half, 19,000 at every game. Yeah. Um, so it's still got that big game feel about it. And you just kind of, it, it was a it was a club in such desperate times like uh, they, they were craving success and Cookie was the right man for it like yeah I know he's done a brilliant job and sure it's no coincidence to see how far he's gone since he left Slider Rovers and it's funny all like I and I have this chat with most of the lads you probably heard me saying it like so much the game has changed so much now to the tactical stuff and you see coaching and overemphasizing on so much nowadays but yet all the ones I've spoken on here <clears throat> and a lot of them. And regardless of what level, the very highest level or League of Ireland or wherever, the amount of them that have said that they've all performed best for a man manager. There was Doyler last week, Owen Doyle, you had Jack Byrne was raving about Richie Wellens, and um, and they all say it. it's that manager that, that makes you, that loves you, I suppose, looks after you, because you want to go out and repay them then. Yeah, but you can't. Cookie plays his football in the right way as well. Mm. It's an enjoyable way, you know, for the fullbacks and midfielders and that he plays it where you, you see improvements and you see how well you can actually play and it's a proper team um, whereas to some some managers might be just more about individual brilliance like back four being a back four wingers you wingers and strikers you win the game for us um, so it's just buying into buying into the manager and the thing is Doyle has played his best football probably under him no, Doyle, Doyle was football. brilliant the other night raving about him yeah yeah, a lot of people do play that, that best football. And I think if you look through his his records, he, he gets a lot of players good moves. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And then, I suppose, and sure, you're the prime example, so you get the move then from... Did you feel as though, in the, because you were so happy there, was there ever a, um, a thought in your mind that maybe, look, I'm happy here now, finally, after all the disappointments, that maybe I'll stay here? Or once Chef United come in, were you moving? Definitely. Um. It's it's a hard one because I did have such a good time down there, but I just thought where where my age was at, and the opportunity that I came up with Chef being in the championship, such a big club, mm. the manager there. I think last season uh, in League One they, they reached like ninety nine or hundred points, um, so I knew I was going into a really strong team, um, and it was more of a case. It's a it's a great opportunity for me, so it, it was one that I had to kind of take. Yeah, yeah, not a time was right. And then how how important was it the fact that you had, you had known Chris Wilder before. Um, were you surprised when he came in for you after the Northampton thing? Uh, no, to be honest, because I think in the Northampton thing, he did see the ability in me. Yeah. Him and Lily did. Like um, It was just more of a fitness thing. and I kind of went away missing then. I think I don't know when the loan was. I think it was like October, October time. So it was pretty early that season. Then I went to Doncaster. They'd probably forgotten completely about me. But then... I played against them for North uh, for Portsmouth against Northampton, and they mm. probably they might have noticed a different player there because I would have been as fit as I've ever been. Okay, um, when I was playing for them, and and they didn't come in for me after the, they got from oh yeah they got from they got promoted out of the league, and then I think I stayed, and then he got promoted out of the league one with Chef Hugh, and then he came in for me then. So tell us about him. I'm mad about him, and uh, obviously he's probably come to people's prominence because of the Premier League this year, but he's been there. Since, hasn't he come through the three leagues or four leagues and he's there a long time but the football Chef United play this year is unbelievable and obviously you're a mainstay in the team how good, how good is he or, or what is it that separates him from the rest or from what you found of the experience from all the other managers uh, he's, he's driven he's a winner you, you know you, you go through the games like I've never seen, like, he, pre-season matters to him. We play games and he's wanting to win every game pre-season. He doesn't care, he wants everything. And he just has that, you know, that same kind of feeling that you want to play for him. He gets the best out of lads and everybody, everyone in the dressing room buys into what he's all about. And um, they're just a great team. He just has a great backroom staff with him. And he just has that kind of balance of, yeah, we want to play good football and that. But first and foremost, we want to win this game. When you first went to meet him, there when he wanted to sign you, did he mention? Oh, I, there's a big, there's a serious change in you since the days of Northampton. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't think so. Um, I, he just kind of tried to explain himself what he wanted from me, what he thinks 
uh, I can bring to the team and try to just sell, you know, the club to you. Um, all what's gone on in the past is kind of the past. Then he's just more worried about what's going on now. And there's a four season in the championship, and that's when I got the fun of that, that four season in the championship. I seen how good the lads actually were and how good this team was, and it was surprising uh, c- compared to the other teams that like that have been in the championship over years and years. And it was, it's a four that four season. I really got a sense that we could we could potentially go promote this. And we had that disappointment in the first year, but second year. We were the whole squad, the whole place was quietly confident that we could do it. But he, he obviously instilled that from day one. You sensed that from day one. As soon as you went in, you realised the quality that was in the squad. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a good, good step up, right? Like, in <clears> terms <throat> of like training and that, like it takes you. It, it took me a while to get up to up to scratch and up to terms, and it was a new position for me. Like I've, I've never been overlapped before in my career, and I have a centre half racing around me, like you know. I know, and I want to get on to, to get on to that, Andy, because the system that he plays, obviously, as I said to somebody the other night, if he was Chris Wilderinio, they'd all be raving about like this system. But yeah. because he's an English lad, maybe, and he's yeah. not as fashionable or whatever, but the football that you play, because everybody thought when he got promoted that Sheffield United would just be fighting and battling and, and hoping to just stay in the league. But the football's phenomenal. Yeah, we work, we work really hard on how we, how we play and we've been playing a system now for the last few years and you're just building them relationships up on the pitch and the the team doesn't change too much so you're used to you know the, the, the good the bad and the ugly parts of your teammates so you're there to help they can help you and it's just he's got that fun, he's got that balance um, with the whole squad and he, he knows he knows when he needs to strengthen and where he needs to strengthen um, and it's just um I don't know, I was just really looking, I was just looking at the comments there. <laughs> yeah, distracting. Um, the mind and comments. Uh, and how do you find an end of the, um, the position of obviously wing back? Uh, because you would have been predominantly, I suppose, left full before, but um, do you prefer it or is there a difference really kind of because of the system you play, it just allows you to attack more? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's like a method behind the madness that people <laughs> keep thinking that it is. But it's something that we 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 just learn and everything. It's hard. You need to be in in the system in the system to know how it works. And um, it's just one that really benefits. Well, the, the only thing, the big thing that I had to learn about was playing in pockets because sometimes you got to drift in the pitch and you get that license to to get in the box and that. So that was what I had to bring to my game. And then obviously the defensive style is a little bit different because you've got extra cover there as, as with the left side of the centre half. Um, but you grow with it. And that kind of stuff ended with underlapping centre halves and overlapping and all that kind of stuff. That like people think you just rock up and do that. That's worked on day in, day out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It does, we play off each other. Do we? Yeah. We just play off each other. So I know if someone's there, I need to be here. It's all. It's hard to explain. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, you, you see it on the pitch, and and any agent that thinks you just rock up and play it like this is way of the fairies. Because, but there was an interview there that Wilder did um, after the Liverpool match. And I think he was disappointed with the fact that how easy Anfield. the Anfield game. Yeah, that's the toughest game I've ever been in my life. But but like, was that the toughest? Because obviously they're phenomenal, as we know. But did you did you not perform to your levels as well? Because he that was the day he came out. Remember, and he said uh, all about the application and the work rate. And if it's good enough for Liverpool, well, then it's good enough for anybody else that they're the best team in the world. And that's what he expects of you every week, but he never reached that level whatsoever. And everybody, that was to me, because the amount of bluffers and shy talkers, really, that you hear managers and putting spin on stuff, whereas every interview he comes out and there's no bullshit. It's, we played great today. We didn't play well enough. We deserve to win. We deserve to lose, whatever the case may be. And for that reason, I, I love him. I think he's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, he, he calls it as it is and how he sees it. So he sees us not performing there, which we didn't. We didn't perform there. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he's, right, he's right to criticise us. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You're saying there it was the toughest game. But And I'm asking, was it because, obviously Liverpool are exceptional, we know that. But was it a case of, because you didn't reach the level either, and maybe that's why it was as tough? Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of both. Like they were, they, they're excellent. Um, we went. We did concede early, early enough into the into the first half, which made it even more difficult. Um, mm. So it was just the way the game panned out. But he, 
he's just he, as I said, he's just a winner. He wants to win games, and if he doesn't feel like we've employed ourselves, he'll tell us. And that's exactly what he does, and he, he wants that reaction. And um, and the lads are willing to take the criticism and react. And, and I think I don't know who he played next, but I think he got that reaction. Oh yeah, brilliant. I thought the interview was unbelievable. Um, John Egan and the Gooter, I know they want to swap. Uh, they, they, they want to swap your right foot <laughs> after all the stick you gave Gooch the other night. Ah, uh, stop. Can after I, the can, celebrations anyway. Ah, I need to get a charger. Can I really walk, get a charger? Walk, 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 yeah, walk, walk. Never prepared. Look at that. <laughs> Keep the show on the road here. What's he like, this fellow? Uh, but yeah, great stuff. And any questions there for Enda, I'll try and get to them. Mr. Cleary, how are you doing? Um, Gooch, John. They want John to sing the song. <laughs> I'll get him to sing it on here next week. Yeah, well, you're right, Wardy. Look at him. So dumb. <clears throat> <laughs> it does something to thumbs up you're right John <laughs> I can hear everything out and uh, I'm going to see this thing cuts out after an hour right I'm here now I know but I'm going to end it because then otherwise you'll, we'll get interrupted and I'm just going to log straight back in okay yeah sound sound right I log, log, go back in in two secs right, right. Now we're back, yeah, he's gone to get the charger, and uh, what is he like? Uh, but it's great to have him on, what a great lad he is, he's absolutely brilliant lad, and he couldn't wish for the success that he's having to happen to anyone else, it's, he's a great lad. Um, so yeah, he's going to come back in here now, and we'll carry on, because the Sheffield United stuff is so interesting, especially with the season that they're having as well, they've been unbelievable. What's he like, Wardy? No charger, he's unbelievable. Here he is now. So we get going again now, and we we'll pick up. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Oh, don't help yourself, do I? What do you like? <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> He's caning you, Wardy. No charger. You're grand. But um, so yeah, that's the thing. End on, I suppose. With that, that's why I love him so much. He's so honest, um, Wilder. But for you as a player playing under him, um, it must be a dream, really. Yeah, it's it it it's exciting. Every you come into every game. No matter who it is, and you're preparing to win, you're not preparing. And like, obviously, we're prepared to to defend and that. But he, he he has that strong belief that he can win every game. And as a footballer, that's what you want. We're not just about kind of surviving or like goal difference or and like that. It's literally we want to win this game. But on that right, Eddie, so when he got promoted to the Premier League, and everybody usually all the pundits people are tipping you to go down inside in your own the, the confines of the dressing room and the belief that he puts in he. Was he, I won't say he was targeting top six, but was he talking about, like, we're going to make a real impact here? Yeah, well, the, the problem is, us as a whole kind of squad were a bit un, unsure of how the season was going to go. Um, we didn't actually know until we actually got playing games. And I don't know, you just kind of, you, you kind of have that, because we have a system and we have a, a way of playing, we knew, we were always confident that we were going to cause, like, teams a lot of problems and, we never really had a problem with scoring goals and keeping clean sheets. So going in, we are well prepared. Um, and in the dressing room, we've all we just have that winning mentality that he's instilled in us over two seasons, well, some lads three seasons. Mm. So that that's a massive massive coup for us, and we just have that kind of desire. Like there's games, there's there's games we we were two 0 down at Stamford Bridge, got a result. Um, good. Two 0 up against Man United, three two down. We still managed to get a result. So we That's great. Always, yeah, it was brilliant. Well, for the for the neutral. <laughs> but, yeah, to play in that and and that and that's the thing. And I suppose you've played every minute of every game, which is a, a brilliant record for yourself. Gone are the, the lazy days. You're obviously fit now as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just <laughs> but, took me um, took me ten but, years to find it. <laughs> ten years to get fit. <laughs> you should ring the pizza manager and tell him. Oh, I no. can fit deliver a few pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> But um, on that as well, and uh, um, how did you find a step up to the Premier League? Um, if I was to compare when I played in the Premier League to then to now, it's like yeah. it's huge. Even though you had more sal in your pocket, you said that last week. Oh, <laughs> well, at home I did. I wouldn't say away. <laughs> but yeah, the quality is unbelievable, is it? And you sense that every week, yeah. 
yeah, definitely. It's it, they're great occasions for us. Um, it's it's a proper I don't know. It's just proper games, tactical games, and every team like you're going into a new league, um, and every team is going to start trying to work you out, trying to suss you out, and they'll they'll do their homework on you. But then playing against us is a, is a different thing. Like you can do as much as you want, but when you're playing against us against the system, it it, it could work for you and it might not. More to, well, most most times this season, I thought we've got a lot of joy. Still, mm. with the overlap, overlapping centre halves, and um, so it, it can't be that hard to to suss out. Do you sense though, and as well in the games that you're catching teams on the hop? Because even though they might be prepared for that, it's a different story when you actually play against that system. Yeah, like I, I play, if I play, if I play shape in training, and I've got Bash, you know, Chris Basham playing right side of centre half. Like I hate it, I, can't, I despise it. I know exactly what they're going to do, but it's just so hard to stop. Like it, yeah. it, it's it's. Uh, they just between him and Jack O'Connell. They've just mastered that position so well. Um, they're just a perfect fit. They've been absolutely brilliant. The, the, the two lads I really like, obviously John as well. I know he's on the chat, but John has been phenomenal as well. So he has three, and I suppose to, to have that friendship and an Irish lad. And I know there's Robinson and McGoldrick too, but um, I know you're close to John. I suppose that helps massively as well. Yeah, it, it, it's it's easier. Like you know, me and Eggs like similar backgrounds and. We like to do the same kind of things, you know. You, you go for coffees after training most days, have the chats. Like, if you lose a game or, or one of them were in, like, a breakfast cafe Monday morning before training, like, having it out, like, oh, we've, we've messed it up, we're not going to get promoted, then we win the game, then we're in the coffee shop saying, we're going to do it, lads, you know. Um, yeah. It's just good because it's, it's, it's like, it's a home away from home now with, with the likes of Irish people, with the, with the Irish lads there and that. Absolutely, yeah. and then obviously we'll, and we'll get to the Ireland stuff, but the fact that you travel away and the two you're doing so well with the Irish team as well, it must be brilliant. Because um, you must feel as though in the earlier years when you might, might have been struggling with confidence or belief, like you must be absolutely right in a crest of a wave now with what's going on. Yeah, uh, it, it, it all kind of fit into place. Um, the Irish got, it, it's a bit disappointing, it's a bit disappointing that the Irish with the whole Vardis thing that didn't get to go through because it would have been a big game, two massive games, but one massive game, Slovakia away and then potentially a final. Uh, so that was a bit disappointing. Um, but uh, like that, that's, uh, it's one of the biggest highlights of my career is representing your country. And like some of the games that we played in the Denmark games and the, the Switzerland games were unbelievable. I'll come to that in a minute. I just want to ask you two more questions about the Chef United team. Because um, I'm a big fan of Norwood, and I don't know, does he get the, the praise? And I'm also a big fan of Fleck. I think the two of them are phenomenal. Uh, how good is it to play alongside them? Yeah, uh, Flecky's, Flecky's like different gravy. Um, he looks brilliant, yeah. Like, personally, or he'd, be, he'd be my favourite player. Like, to be him, McGoldrick, the two of them, maybe, um, my two favourite players in the team. All in all, we can run a game. Um, Ball like his feet, his technique is. I don't think I've seen anyone with technique like that. Yeah. Uh, the way you can ping a ball is is, is scary. And then we just have that, 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 that as you say, the, as I said, that's the balance that we have. Like you've got him sitting, kind of dictating play, and you've got like Flecky, who's brilliant, and Lunny, who's brilliant at running with the balls, and and uh, he's done very well, Lundstrom. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like Lunny didn't play much for us in the championship, but he's 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 really kicked on, and that can, <laughs> then you put that down to the manager again. Mm. Um, and the other thing then I suppose we mentioned there about Liverpool and how good they were is there any game and the Man United one is there any game where you thought to yourself wow these are like this is this fella's a joke or this team are unbelievable or anyone that stands out of out of the, out of the league so far that you played um, yeah like there's, there's most teams have the players that can change a game when they're happy like you know the, the quality is there um, like, is there many, if, is there any nights you come on the phone to Wardy and says, Wardy, you want to see this fella, he's unreal. And Wardy's shouting down the phone, he's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool had a few really, really good players, yeah. They really do, don't they? Um, Jordan Henderson was excellent when we played against them. Henderson's underrated, isn't he? He's under, yeah. You have to, when you play against him, you kind of see it, but he was, he was unbelievable that day when we played against him. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, he makes the game look effortless. It's scary, like um, who else? There's a there's a load in that, but the the thing is with us is that like we we we're always in games, you know. We we well the Liverpool game was it was a tough one for us, and we'll put that rule that one out. But Man City yeah. away, like the, the first goal was quite fortunate, obviously with the referee and that. 
Um, and that was a joke that night. And we had some great chances in that game. So you, you see it and you see these players and that, but like you're always going to get chances. We feel like we'll always get chances to score. And I mean, we've had plenty of chances over the course of the season. Okay, and you've been absolutely brilliant with your time, so I won't delay you too much longer. But just on the Ireland stuff, so you made your debut then against the USA a couple of years ago. You mentioned it there, um, just about how proud you are. I know you maybe, it might have taken a bit of time, but you've established yourself as the left full now, which must be an unbelievable feeling for yourself. And with what's to come, obviously, the playoff game, and now with Stephen Kenny taking over and a new regime, you're surely you're excited about all that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something to, to look forward to, obviously. I never worked with Stephen Kenny, but you know, you know, he's named through the League of Ireland. He's he's probably the most successful manager, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I remember watching that that Dundalk team on their uh, European travels, and they they were really competitive in the group stage. Um, they were unlucky. I think they just missed out, did they? Yeah, yeah. The well, they got, they got, yeah, they got the same as Shamrock Rovers got into the group stage. Yeah, but they were but they were close. And everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. You, you, they always played that nice style, nice brand of football, and it, it'd be interesting to see now how he he, he interprets his, his style of play. Well, already, I'm sure he's he's already a fan of yours, but he mentioned John a lot in the press conference as well. I think he's a big fan of John, um, Stephen, and he'll enjoy the way to play as well as he said because he I I can see a major difference with the Irish setup now with Stephen coming in without putting too much pressure on him. But I think there'll be it's real exciting times with what's happening at the moment. Yeah, you you would have seen a lot more of him um, over the years, and yeah. You see what he's done for like players, and he's got a good record of players moving across to England who've, who've worked under him under at thirty with the likes of James um, Laffs and a lot of them, and obviously at Dundalk he had a lot of players that moved across the water. So he's kind of got that that thing of getting the best out of players. How did you find a step up then? And you mentioned Denmark and Switzerland were probably the two best teams you played against. Um, compares to maybe playing every week in the Premier League, some people argue now that international football isn't as good as what it, what it used to be and club football and Premier League football is where it's at in Champions League. Did you see a step up or did you see something similar kind of from what you're used to every week? It's, it, it, with international football, it's hard to kind of get them relationships that you have at club level, you mm. know, with, with the lads that you're playing with. But that's where you got to trust the players to know the game. And, and I think we've, we've, got a, we've got a good squad there of players and he's got plenty of players to choose from. Um to kind of build that and, and hopefully like we we will we, we will like I don't know like what way it's going to work with the virus or not but he'll have obviously Nations League yeah with the help and, and we can build we can build on that kind of the way he wants to play and the way he wants us to set up and and it can only benefit us because uh, it's it's one of the most difficult things for international managers trying to it's trying to get the way they want to play out there on the pitch well, as you said, Wilder's there, you're doing that day in, day out for the last two, three, four years, whatever, putting the system in place. Just shows you how hard it is. Uh, it can be difficult, but I guess Stephen will, Stephen's attention to detail and exactly what he would want from me, I'm sure uh, he'll get that across absolutely, maybe from what was going on before. You don't need to say that, I'll say it. <laughs> but just on that end, right? Um, so you've been absolutely brilliant. The stuff now, the little questions about your teammates. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know about these, like... <laughs> if Wardy doesn't get a mention, he'd be devastated. Oh, Keith Ward, he dares his mention, because he's nowhere on this <laughs> list. <laughs> so the best player you played with? Uh, best player, I wrote them down. Is this played with, like, does this have to be on the pitch in a competitive game? Well, where else would you play with him? Well, Robbie Keane, I never played with Robbie Keane, but when he came into Villa, like, like that was like, Mesmerising how good he was. Yeah. Well, you can give him a shout out for that, but someone who you play, yeah, who like you play with every week or. Um, it's hard. Years, like, wherever now, it doesn't have to be Chef United, wherever. I'd probably go. I'd probably go Stephen Ireland. Okay. I, ability wise, he was he was up there, one of the best I've ever seen. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, like if, if some of the stuff you'd see every day in training, and that was it was just ridiculous. The ability he had, like, was scary. I know, because it's, it's just a shame. Everyone talks so highly of Ireland, and we all know, obviously, things didn't pan out for him or whatever. But I didn't realise he was that good. Uh, he, uh, he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. There was, like, obviously, Stylian Petrov was there. Um, he was excellent. But Stephen Arnold, like, he could just do things. Like, Robbie Kane was unbelievable. Yeah. But I didn't get to actually play a game with him. Um, but I played with Stevie Ireland the following season. 
Uh, Robbie went back to America, but Steve, he played, um, and he was he was excellent. Okay, um, fair enough. Best player you played against? Um, it was probably when we played. It was probably in the game we played. We got B five nil off Man City. Oh yeah, that was, was that was your second game of Villa, was it? Yeah, um, but Jesus, they were unbelievable. Uh, I'd go with David Silva because I played again. I played up against him that day, and he was. He, he was unbelievable without really... He never embarrassed me or that, but I couldn't yeah. get near him. And the way he plays the game, you just, you're just you redundant against him. You can't affect it. He's that good. Um, him, Aguero, Tevez, and yeah, yeah. Like all them boys. Go David Silva. Silva is unreal. And, and I hear people... Imagine I hear people doubting him and underrated, like saying he's not at the level that people think he's at. Like, what is wrong with people? Silva is amazing. Oh, he's amazing. He's, a, he's one of them who it just makes the game look so easy. So that's what I look to is just players like that, like Kevin De Bruyne as well. He just makes the game look so easy. One of the lads texting it, Kev, text in there, Kev Byrne. Um, I know Kev well, and he's texting in about Stephen Ireland, saying he's probably the best midfielder since Keane. Stephen Ireland, he probably yeah. is. Like, if you think about it. Like when he when he first when he first burst onto the scene, he he, he took it by storm, didn't he? Well, everybody uh, thought he was going to go on to such heights, like you know. Yeah. And he never really lost that ability because I've seen it in training and there and then. I just think maybe his fit wasn't right in um, a villa. Yeah. But um, uh, he was, honestly, he's unbelievable. Technically, you could see a pass and start, you just you'd stop and say, wow. Wow. That's high praise, yeah. I knew he was good, as I say, but I, that's some praise. And obviously, you played with him. Um, so the best manager then that you ever had in that, and you can, I know it's difficult now with Wilder, but you can name him if you want. Yeah, I put it down to Paul Cook because the situation I was in, he got me, he kind of gave me that stepping stone then to, like he improved me massively. And then when I went to Chris Wilder, uh, Chef U, I improved again. So I've had both, I've had success with both of them, but you, I'd go Cookie because of the position I was in and how he changed me and he turned my career around. And then I'd go for Chris Wilder because this, he, he speaks for itself, his record for itself. It's, do, you, do you speak to Cookie now? Um, I, I wouldn't speak to him now. Like uh, he was at me, he was at my daughter's Christmas. Christmas, like he flew in for it, you know. I still speak okay. to him, Gary Roberts. Uh, speak to Carl Bennett a bit. Michael Doyle, Michael Doyle, I speak to him an awful lot. Um, okay. Sent I made. He uh, he had yeah, some he, career, Michael Doyle. Yeah, but to be fair, I give Cookie a lot of praise. I have to give him a bit of praise because he was great for me as well. Okay. He he's he's the he's the one that's honest with you, and he'll tell you. He's like he's like a manager. He manages the players. You get me as a okay. captain. Um, and he was brilliant for me as well. So he called you lazy and easy going as well, did he? He he slaughtered <laughs> you when you need to be slaughtered, like. But uh, nah, I, like I still speak to him every day. Yeah. Like even today, I'd call like I have an hour, two hours. Mrs. Hates it when he rings me. Um, I'm on the phone to him so long, but uh, he's one that I've really kept in contact with since leaving Cosmo. Yeah, but even even you say that it speaks volumes because you look at the career that he had; it's absolutely phenomenal. yeah, exactly, yeah. Seven eight hundred games or something, Michael Doyle is that? Yeah, and he's 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 only ever played for big clubs, you know. He, yeah, he, he's a big club player, like, and he's always been captain wherever he's been. Speaks volumes, Jan, and if you're right to give him the mention as well. Okay, and your best memory in football? Uh, again, it goes down to three memories. I'd probably say Belgrade. Um, uh, from uh, winning the league on the final day of Portsmouth and being promoted to the to the Premier League, they're not bad memories to have. Yeah, you'd go. I'd, I'd go first. I'd have to say being promoted to the Premier League, like it was, it was yeah. unbelievable. But just the way, the way it kind of panned out with Leeds playing the next day, it was a bit of a, like we had to wait and that. But it was a bit of a downer. But compared to Portsmouth, where we won the league on the final day, you had the the pitch invasion and all that. You know, the fans got involved and it was it was brilliant. The uh, celebrations looked unbelievable with, with Chef Knight, even the manager and all. It was the, the day he was coming out of the ground, and I think he was still pissed. And yeah. had, but but that's it. But that shows the camaraderie amongst y'all. Obviously, John singing the song and, and y'all involved, and it looks like fair enough. You you have quality on the pitch, but that goes such a long way as well. Like the the group and obviously what you have together, the whole body. Yeah, we like he came. I think that that's Eags four season. He came in. He bought into it straight away. You know, and he. Like he would have, he would have been similar to me. He would have never really played in a back three, and playing in that back three, like you are left one v one at times, you know. Which, uh, but he came in, he he settled in straight away, and he's been immense ever since. 
But he encourages that winder, doesn't he? Like the fact that take responsibility for a one-on-one or whatever. Too many people make excuses for stuff now and looking for cover. And But he, he, he wants you to take on that responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he just, he wants to go and win the game. You know, if the yeah. goals are going to win you the game. And he wants, he wants, um, he wants front foot football. So he just wants people on the front foot constantly. Con- and Eags is the only player. Eags and probably Ollie Norwood are the only two players that can't really go front foot football because then you'd have no one left. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's unfortunate. He's left with, he's left to, to mop up. But he's, he's, he's grown into that role unbelievably. No, he's had a great season, yeah. And, um, okay, and uh, you've been great with your time, as I said. You're five aside. Um. Oh, see. Then again, I haven't even picked this. I should have. I prepared for everything else except for this. <laughs> but, like five or so players, I'm going total, like, total out and out footballers here. Of course, yeah. Well, sure. That's that's you, isn't it? So that's that's what you want. So do I have to play five kickers? Well, never know. It gets me results. <laughs> um. What way does this work? Do I have to play on a football pitch with them again, or kind of? Whatever way you want. You've been so good, so you can do what you want from here on in. I don't care now. I'd go probably. I'd probably. I'd put Michael Doyle in captain at the back, you know, because he's good passer of the ball and he's aggressive. I'd probably go. Jeez, you caught me off guard here with this, even though you you warned me about it before. Wardy's hating you again. Look. <laughs> What's he saying? So dumb. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know. Like I'd probably go Michael Doyle. Let's say Stevie Ireland, Robbie Keane. Well, Ireland has to go in after all the praise he gave. Him. Yeah, Robbie Keane. There was a lot of Portsmouth. He was unbelievable technically. Carl Benny, like feet wise, five aside, he'd be unbelievable in that. Okay. Um, how many is that? That's four. four. One four. Um. Yeah, no more. That the... I'll go John Fleck. Yeah, I'm, I was. I would have been disappointed if you didn't pick Fleck. I think Fleck is brilliant. Yeah, so do I. I could see Fleck moving on. Yeah, I have to hope so. I hope not. I know, obviously, you don't. You hope not, but I think he's that good. I really do. I think he's brilliant. Yeah, he is. He's, he's class. He's just one of them. He's got a bit of everything in him. He can sit. He can drive at the ball. He's good for the goal. And he's great for a tackle. <laughs> I love the tackle as well, yeah. yeah. Okay, Andy, you've been an absolute star, and uh, I always knew you would be anyway, and... As I said earlier on, everybody loves you, I love you, and you're doing brilliant things at the moment, and everybody's genuinely delighted for you as well, so keep it going, and look after yourself, and we'll chat to you soon. Cheers, bud. I'll see you later.